Hi guys, welcome back to my channel. And if you're new here, then welcome. This is the Makeup and Malinois YouTube channel. <laughs> um, today, as you probably saw in the title, we are going to go over what's in my training bag. So I was inspired to do this because I've watched a few different uh, channels where they'll have videos like what's up in my what's in my makeup bag what's in my luggage or my travel bag, what's in my purse. So a cool thing that I thought would be to do is what's in my training bag. So originally I used to have a bag that was a lot smaller than this. It was like, I don't know, a tool bag and it was Ben's and I just kind of like started using it for, for my training stuff. And then I was like, this isn't really working for me anymore. So I found this bag on Amazon and I put my sweet logo on it if you couldn't tell. But this is like the perfect size. You're going to be surprised at how much I actually can fit in here. And I love it because it has this little front pocket, which I can put my cell phone in, my camera in, other like random little things that I need to throw in here. And then it has this ginormous big main pocket that holds like everything that I could possibly need and more when I'm training. So to get started, the obvious thing that I always need on me is my vest, my sweater vest. This is uh, seen better days. <laughs> um, admittedly, I used to hate wearing vests and I truthfully didn't wear them for the longest time. I would just wear like hoodies or stuff that I could like stick in the pocket, like, like my balls and stuff in the pockets. And then, I don't know, I started dating Ben years ago and he was like, you need to wear a vest. So <laughs> I took one of his. It, it's ginormous on me. It's falling apart. It smells. I've washed it. It no longer cinches anymore. But I also, part of me feels like I can't get rid of this because it has like good, good juju. Like, I don't know, you know, Ben trialed with it. I trialed with Raiden with it. I trialed with Narco with it. And I've had, thankfully, really good success. So it's just like a little superstitious thing. So this is my vest. I have my whistle. This actually was originally Ben's whistle because the clip on mine broke and I have yet to fix it. But I use a whistle for my recall and that's why I like to have it right here. I used to have it on a lanyard, but I found that it just got, uh, got in the way and my girlfriend actually made me an, a, uh, a badge reel and I started using it and like I said, it, it broke training just because someone, not naming names, jumped up and... Uh, accidentally caught it and and ripped it off of me and I've yet to actually get an, another alligator clip or I don't think it was an alligator clip but whatever the clip is onto the badge reel because I don't know but yeah I use a whistle this is my vest the next thing we have in line here is a shit ton of leashes in French ring you need to use a leash that is I believe no longer than a meter and it doesn't have the loop or the handle at the end. So I have two biothane leashes that I keep on me um, for healing and I keep them on me usually in my back pocket when I'm out training, at least one of them because you never know when I'm going to need to throw a leash on them. So these are my leashes. The other thing that I always, always, always use with Narco is an e-collar when I'm training. Um, my Garmin Tritronics has been probably my favorite one so far of all the e-collars that I've tried and have used. So we have two of these. This is a three dog one and the other one is a three dog one as well. But I just, I just like this one better. It has the, the low, the medium and the high. If you hold both buttons, it has vibrate and it has seven levels, it has the continuous, the Nick and the accessories. So I can light up his collar if I want to put the lights on, which I never do. But this is probably my favorite e-collar to date that uh, I feel it's been the most reliable and the easiest to use. Initially, I, it was a little bit of a struggle because it is so big, but you know, I just hold it in my hand and I've or I stick it in my pocket and it hasn't been a problem. So, e collar always the the box right now is charging, so it would normally be in here, but I had to keep it on the charger. So, e collar always, 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 always. For an agitation collar, I don't. I don't use harnesses because I don't have one that fits Narco well anymore and I truthfully hate putting on harnesses and taking them off because I ain't got time for that. So I use this agitation collar that was actually given to me by my friend Noel. It's by Canine Athletes. I'm not really sure how many inches thick this is but this has been perfect for when we're doing dragons or we're doing upper body work. 
um, this is like my go-to collar. So I always have this on me. Sometimes I let them use it as like an actual collar. That's why there's a tag on it. It really shouldn't be on there, but whatever. Agitation collar. I have two grass pads. So the grass pads I use as like place buckets for when I'm doing my jumps. So I've kind of like faded out him going to place buckets when I'm doing the hurdle or I'm doing the, um, the palisade or the long jump. So he'll go to one of these. And also I use this for the send away. I have a ball that I'll stick under and I'll get to this in a second. I'll put the ball underneath the pad and I'll put this up against the wall or a fence or whatever and I will send him to it and have him down on it and obviously he rewards himself with it. So I like him not to be able to see the reward so that's why I put the little fake grass over it. Obviously it doesn't work right now when there's snow on the ground but <laughs> you know I think he gets the point. So grass pads are a must. My balls. This was a or this is a liker ball and I actually really really liked the handle on this ball. I got two of them and unfortunately they broke like that on me. I don't know if, you know, just with tugging, the little knot on it just gave way and, and that was it. And I honestly don't know what happened to the ropes. So now I just use this for my send away or if I, I don't know if I just need another ball, but I don't like to use balls without strings for reward just cause I like him to be interacting with me and engaging with me and in the funds with me. So my star mark is actually my tried and true ball that I always, always, always use. This is like my main reward for Narco. Um, I don't, I very rarely use tugs just because I find that getting them out of my pocket can be a pain in the butt or, or whatever. So this one, they're cheap. You can get them on Amazon, like $8. I've had the, the Gappy balls. The only thing was is that I couldn't get the ones that were, I couldn't find the ones that were bigger because the ones that I had were too small and they could be a choking hazard, say if the, the string broke and you know, like he likes to think that he's getting more in his mouth I'd be afraid he inhales it so the star mark ball is my tried and true this one hasn't been used nearly as much as some of my other ones like the one in my car is really ugly right now so I took out the pretty one the next thing I have is a muzzle this is a Jaffco muzzle when I trained and trialed with Raiden I always used the Italian basket muzzle but Ben had like a ton of these so I just started using this one with Narco and it stuck there's a heel off leash but with muzzle and French ring so that's why I have to do the muzzle uh, training with him. It's also good just to, to have your dog you know desensitized to a muzzle and being able to put it on and off without any issues if you go to the vet or whatever. So always gonna have my muzzle on me. Another one of my my leashes. So this is a shorter leash that I'll keep on me and I'll keep this in my back pocket as well. This I usually um, only use for if like he needs a leash, he no longer does. But when we're teaching the escort, we'll put like two leashes on them and not like super long, annoying ones. We'll use the shorter ones. So that's usually what this is for. I th thought I had two of these. I couldn't tell you where the other one went. Story of my life here. <laughs> we have so much stuff. But so I'll keep one of these ones on me and usually the biothane and then I'll hook both of them on when we're doing escorting if need be. So that's why I always have at least two leashes on me. This next leash is my absolute favorite leash in the entire freaking world. And I couldn't tell you where you could purchase one now because I remember where I got it. So this is a rubbery, like, I don't know if this is biothane, not really, no. It's like a rubbery, like, it's got the grips on it leash. I got this six years ago now. I think I got it from Can-Am online. And this is like the best leash for when you're doing bite work to like hold them back because the leather leashes like tear up my hands. I get um, calluses and blisters. And the ones that are like, I don't know, like clothy with the rubbery stuff in them, like this one has like a little bit of like, I don't know if you can see, like a rubberiness to them. This still like tears up my hand. So this has been like the best leash ever invented. I wish I knew where it came from. I wish they still made them or if they do still make them, they made them more accessible. Cause like I will Google, I know other people ask me and they've tried to find it and it can't be found, it can't be replicated. Maybe I should start making them myself because like I said, this is like the best thing for when you have a dog that's like, you know, strong and you try and hold them back and it's also good because like it it'll like if you put it on your legs it kind of like grips there too so it's just like i don't know extra resistance extra you know force to hold them back it's safer because you want to be a tree when you're posting up and not let the decoy get bit but best leash ever if if anything ever happens to this i've lost it a few times 
and I've refound it again, and then my world's right again. I would die without this thing. Thankfully, I don't need to use it too much anymore, but when I'm helping other people, I'm like, let me go get my leash, because <laughs> I'm not using what you got on there. <laughs> so this, <laughs> the next thing is I have this really thin choker. This um, it doesn't get used often. I just, truthfully, Narco likes to get really, really amped up, and he just leaks out drive. So I will use a really thin choker like this to just kind of um, choke him out a little bit. I don't want to say choke him out because, you know, it's not that aggressive as it sounds. But I'll just use this to, like, tighten and, and be like, you know, couche or, you know, be quiet. And this kind of just r reminds him in a very, like, impersonal, like, non-conflict, not amping him up more way that, like, I need to settle down. We're not going to start doing work until I shut up and I relax and I settle in so that's what I use this for I sometimes I forget like honestly like it's I'll keep it in my my best and it'll fall out and I'll forget about it and it'll just kind of go missing again and then pop up again I guess I don't use it often enough but that's what this is for it now has a safe home so hopefully it doesn't go missing on me again other thing is we have our horns so in French ring, to start an exercise, to end an exercise, they use the horn. I'm not going to horn it because it's loud and obnoxious. We have many horns, but I found this one has like, I don't know why horns can be such a pain in the butt. They can be unreliable too, like the little piece in there will fall out and it'll be jingling around in this little, this little bubble here. So I have found that this one stays intact and it's not falling apart and the, the ball isn't falling off on the end. It's on there pretty sturdy. So this is also kept in my vest pretty frequently because a lot of times it's just like me and Ben training so I have to also be horning just to simulate a trial environment so I have to have a horn. My sock, this is my retrieve item. I've been using this since I've been trialing with Raiden so it's a little worn and beat up. I really should have two socks because in ring there's the throne retrieve, the scene retrieve, and the unseen so really I need one in each pocket because the um, what is it? The throne retrieve is in my right pocket, so I gotta throw it. The scene retrieve is in my left, and then the unseen is also back into my right. But your girl's smart enough just to remember which exercises are next and what pocket I need to put it in. So far, I guess I shouldn't shouldn't get ahead of myself. But thankfully, I haven't had any issues. I really should have two socks, but this one has been working really well. It has not fallen apart. Sometimes they like unravel, and um, I'm not the one who, who rolled it, bended, so I couldn't even tell you really how to do it. But Gotta have a sock. You can also use um, an eyeglass case in French ring, but I don't know. The sock just makes more sense to me. I also have a fur saver. I don't ever like train with a fur saver, but I use it in trial when I do the heel on leash, so I need to have it. Sometimes I'll put it on him when we're training, but honestly, like this hardly ever gets used. It's just for trialing, and because I have to trial with it, I keep it on me. So. My fur saver. This is like the one collar that I always use on him and it's stupidly tangled up is my prong collar. I use the Herm Springer, however you pronounce it. Um, they're the best ones. They're the most reliable. They're not going to break on you. I've had knockoff ones before, like when Raiden was a puppy and I didn't want to buy an expensive one just yet. It popped right off and bite work. <laughs> so yeah, just put in the money and buy the, the Herm Springer. They're much more durable and better quality. I personally like the ones with the plate that's right in the middle here. And the reason being is because it makes the prongs go in opposite directions. So when it's on the dog's necks, the prong is actually going this way rather than all in the same direction. I have just found that um, it works better. I don't know, maybe it's just me. But I, I find that when they're going in like opposite directions into their coat, it just, I don't know, the correction is a little bit better. And I really feel like for Narco, I should be using a, I don't know how many millimeters this is, the micro prong. I have a micro prong. I think it's like 2.5 millimeters is the micro prong. But the only thing with that is like the, the prongs themselves tend to like bend really easy. So I'm always having to like put them back. But with Raiden, I had to use a micro prong because he was not very sensitive to corrections. So I got a micro prong and the communication was much better. The prongs worked better, but like I said, and he also had a really thick coat, so it got in, worked in better. But like I said, the, the prongs themselves warp really easy. They bend easy, so it's kind of a pain, but 
This is the one I've used on Narco since day one. I love it. It's what I always put on him for it and e collar. Those are usually the two things that I'm that I'm training with. Some other things I have is I have kibble. I very rarely use someone's getting excited and thinks it's gonna get fed. Yeah, I know. <laughs> I hardly ever use food rewards with narco and I really should because like with energy expenditure obviously it takes a lot less energy eating food than it does me throwing the ball and tugging and all that stuff I mean thankfully he's motivated for both but I keep this on me in the event that I feel like switching it up but mostly I just use it for the little dogs when I'm working with them they're extremely food motivated so this is like you know my go-to reward for the little guys and I only use kibble when they're puppies my favorite is, what is it, the Bill Jack and that yellow bag that has to be in the refrigerator that's like softer. And my favorite thing about that is because they're like little kibble size, but they're like almost like Play-Doh. So you can make like a big ball and have like the dog like, you know, doing luring and stuff. Like they're actually like, you know, just licking and getting a little bit rather than like with the kibble. Like I just have to give one at a time and it's quicker for them to chew it up and swallow it rather than having to like chew on kibble, swallow. So... That's my favorite for puppies. Once they get past that stage of like luring and like having to, you know, swallow and eat it quick, then I just go straight to kibble because they should be motivated to, for any kind of food I'm gonna give them. So kibble it is for, for the adults, even the little, the little guys. I also have ram sets in here. Typically I will have my, the blank gun in here too. I say mine, it's, it's Ben's, but our blank gun in here, I'm not quite sure where that is right now it might be in Ben's truck or it might be in our clubhouse but I keep the ram sets on me we use these in lieu of buying blanks for the gun they're cheaper they're easily accessible we use I believe it's like they're um, labeled like one through four number two has been our best bet for sound because our blank guns like super loud and the number two seems to be the one that is the least noise making and reliable so just the little ram sets these go into our little Revolver blank gun. Keep these bad boys on me. I also have a clicker on me. Um, Narcos marker trains, but with YES, I'm not going to say it because he's over there. I've never really taught him the clicker. Raiden was clicker trained. The little dogs know the clicker, so that's why I keep it on me because it's my training bag. It's not just for Narco, even though mostly it is just for him, but the little dogs too. And then the last thing I have in here is my tape measure, and this is in meters. We use this for measuring our jumps, like the long jump. The palisade is marked and the hurdle is marked, so we don't really need to measure that, but our long jump needs to be measured pretty much every time we change it. So it's just easier having a measuring tape that's in meters rather than having to do conversions because Lord knows I'm terrible at math and Lord knows I'm terrible with converting. <laughs> so uh, yeah, meter tape measure, must have. But yeah, so that's everything that I typically will keep on me when I'm training. And believe it or not, almost everything that I just showed you does fit in the vest that I have. That's another reason why I can't part with it because it is so big and it is so flexible that I can shove a lot of stuff in those front pockets, in the back pockets. And as ugly as it is, as beat up as it is, as, it is, as many times as it's had to be sewn because... Narco is infamous for when we're healing or when he comes back in to heal. He like catches either like his tooth in this front pocket or he'll catch like his paw and like rip on it. I'll show you in a second when I when I put all this stuff away. It seems like the left pocket's been had to be re-sewn over and over and over again. But let's see. Where are you? Yeah. See? It's already. I'm pretty sure when we were doing our ring two, he did this in trial. I believe that's what happened here. But as you can see, it's already been sewn. It's been sewn multiple times. And down here. But I think Hank also is did a number on this when he was alive as well. So it's not just Narco. But yeah, there he's infamous for just getting like his paw stuck in here and pulling when he's coming back into heel or tooth. He's so stupid. But yeah, the, the pockets are really deep. So you can actually fit a lot of stuff in here. There's times where I put my hands in here and I find like old kibble. And I'm like, how long have you been in there for? So... Yeah, I mean, the, the, the vest is absolutely essential. I have found when I'm training with new people that they don't always have everything that they need on them while they're out on the field. And I'm always like, you know, 
just make sure you have prepared before you walk out on that field. Make sure you have everything that you think you need. Make sure you have extra leashes. If you need a, a prong collar or your e-collar, rewards, anything like that, because it's a pain in the ass to then have to stop and have someone run off the field and bring you, you know, a leash or a collar, or you have to like put your dog in a down in the middle of a session and then it kind of like breaks the flow and you have to go and get something out of your car. So it's better just to have your essentials, I feel, in like a bag like this that you can just easily throw things into and go and run out the door with and also have it on you. So having a training vest is key to when you're doing you're doing your work so and then obviously there's some things I can't fit in here so like I use I use a crop um, I use a crop for a few different things it sounds worse than it is I use it when I'm teaching the hurdle Raiden naturally would just kick his back legs up when he went over the hurdle so I never had to use this with him but narco liked to tuck him so what I would do is I would just like hold this right in front of the bar and as he's jumping I would just like flick his little back feet and he learned to like kick them out mostly reliable now sometimes I'll throw this in just to remind him like hey you got to keep kicking your feet out I also use it for healing because he likes to kind of like forge his butt out so I'll use this as like a not like as a correction but like a like a reminder like hey get your butt in and it's up to the point now where I can just say get your butt in and and he'll do it but Sometimes he needs a little bit of a physical reminder too. So I use this for healing. I use this for the hurdle. And sometimes I will just use this because he likes to come in like 100 miles an hour into a heel, like downfield at me. So I use this as like a, a deterrent to like not body slam me because he loves to body slam me. I have videos of that in trial that I posted on my Instagram, Makeup and Melanoma, that you can go and laugh at me because how I haven't face planted or eaten shit yet is is beyond me with the way he comes in at me so that's what I use my crappie for this cannot fit into this bag unfortunately and unfortunately it can't fit into my vest I've tried to like hide it in the back like you know like a sword but it doesn't stay in because my vest isn't tight enough so yeah that's everything this is what's in my training bag if you guys liked it give me a, a thumbs up if you want to subscribe I'd greatly appreciate it if you have any questions you can leave them in the comments box below and yeah, let me know if you guys want to see anything and I hope you have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.